say hello. And um, I would like to get started now. And I'd like to just settle in with an opening chant. It's not a yogic chant, but it is, it is yoga in the sense that it reminds us of the essential unity of all beings and all things. I'm going to put you on mute, but you can feel free to sing along in your own space. All right, find your yogic seat and your long spine. Take a deep breath in, and soften your shoulders down away from your ears. And let it out with a sigh, letting go of anything that doesn't need to be here this morning. Any heaviness in the heart, any tension in the body, and any distraction in the mind. Just let the power of the out-breath wash it away and rinse you clean. There's a quote that has been attributed to Albert Einstein, where he says, a human being is part of a whole called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. She experiences herself, her thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of her consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circles, by widening our circles of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. So I'd like to invite us to set that as a collective intention this morning as we move through our practice. This idea of these ever widening circles of compassion that we can reach into with our minds and hearts. Each one of us has circles of community that we identify with, that we consider as our people. Whether it be your family, whether it be your nationality, your racial or ethnic heritage, 
Maybe it's your circle of community that's the Friday night bowling league. Whatever it is that you identify with as your community creates an identity for ourselves uh, through which we, with which, in which we move through the world. And having these circles of identity is a wonderful thing to help us on one level, but it also has inherent dangers. When the ego becomes very solidified around these circles, then necessarily that creates a sense of us within the circle and them outside of the circle. And to raise our consciousness into a more unitive state of being, we need to soften the edges of those circles. Maybe not completely dissolve them, but allow them to have soft edges so that we can always be aware of our place in the circle of all beings. And we have all, in graphic detail, very seen the painful repercussions of holding those circles uh, too tightly and solidifying them into us and them. And so one of the gifts of our yoga practice is to learn how to widen those circles of compassion to include all of all beings in the entire universe as part of our family. Let's bring the hands together in front of the heart and honor that intention together with the sound of Om. Taking a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale with the sound of Om. Oh. I invite you now to remove the cushion that you're sitting on and come forward into a child's pose. Just to take a moment to stretch through the back body, the arms and shoulders. Reach your hands forward toward the front of your mat. Let your sitting bones sink down toward your heels. And continue to allow the breath to be long and slow and deep. with a gentle ujjayi brushing the back of the throat. Little narrowing of the airway so the breath makes a whisper sound. And in this position, it's a perfect moment to make any personal offering or dedication that feels appropriate for you dedicating your practice to something or someone or some quality that you would like to invite in to your mind and heart. And perhaps an offering of gratitude or a letting go. And on the next inhale, rise up into your table pose and take some cat-cow spinal waves. Long, slow, sweeping breaths, inviting the spine to come into its deepest expression of cat and cow spinal flexion and extension. The next time you come into the 
Cow tilt, press the low belly toward the thighs and draw the shoulders back away from the ears. Curl the toes under, press back through the heels, feel the stretch in the bottom of the feet. And then with fingers spread wide, press down and forward into the hands, pressing into a downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And take a few breaths here to lengthen through the backs of the legs with a slow pedaling of the feet, pressing one heel into the mat and then the other. Keeping long through the whole back of the torso and the arms, giving a little drawing in and up of the navel to support the spine, lifting the tailbone. Feel how that creates a little bit more stretch in the backs of the legs as you root the heels down into the earth. Coming into your full expression of downward facing dog. And if at any point when we're doing downward dog you feel you need a rest, you can float the knees down to the mat and take table or child. One more deep breath in downward facing dog if you're still here. And then slowly walk the feet to come between the hands coming up onto your fingertips so you can come into a forward bend. I'll turn to face you. Soften the knees as you need to, to let the spine just pour out of the pelvis. Let the head be loose and find your yes and your no and your maybe. Maybe taking a little swinging of the spine if that feels good. Maybe taking it into a rag doll where you're grabbing your opposite elbows. And then releasing the hands, slide the fingers halfway up the legs to just below the knees. Press fingertips into the shins to take a long flat back with a reverse shrug of the shoulders. Big inhale. Engaging that gentle Uddiyana Bandha lift. And exhale, fold. Bend the knees a little bit more and a wide sweep of the arms, rising sun, lifting you into extended mountain and palms come together and return to the heart. And take a long, slow, deep breath in and release, letting the shoulders find a little more softening away from the ears. And what I'd like to do here is to do an invocation with our bodies, a body prayer to the four directions, thinking about those ever-widening circles of compassion and circles of community that we live in, taking a moment to honor the circle of all the life forms that we share this planet with. So I'd like to invite you to start by facing east, coming into mountain pose, so whatever direction is east for you. And if you're not sure which way is east, it doesn't matter where you start, really. Coming into mountain pose, feet hip width apart, long spine, roll the shoulders down and back. And then bring the hands to the heart in prayer. We're just going to take th three deep breaths to each of the four corners, each of the four quadrants of the circle. Beginning facing east, honoring the sky and all the winged ones, all the life forms that share this beautiful sky that we're all enveloped in. <sighs> Inhale, arms reach and rise, big breath in. Exhale, bend the knees and round the spine, chin to chest, squeezing out all the breath. <sighs> honoring the great eagles and condors <sighs> and the tiny sparrows the water birds, the gulls, and, exhale, and even the tiny hummingbirds, all those beings with whom we share the sky. Palms come together and back to the heart. And taking a quarter turn to face the south. You're gonna turn toward your right, so you end up facing south. Honoring all the plant life that's around us, that brings us beauty and nourishment. 
inhale, honoring the trees that are so full and green and lush right now. Exhale, squeeze out all the breath. Inhale, sweep up, honoring the vast fields of grasses and the plains, the garden, of all that's coming forth in our gardens and all of the blossoms that are smiling at us right now, all of the plant life that nourishes us, that we have that symbiotic relationship with. Palms together, hands return to the heart. And gratitude to all the plant life. And taking a quarter turn to face the West, honoring all of those creatures that live in the waters and near the waters. Inhale, sweep up, exhale, get a little deeper in your squat and round the spine a little more deeply. Pull the navel in and squeeze out all the breath. The fish, the scaly ones, the snakes, the slithering ones, and all of the water mammals, the dolphins, the whales, the manatees, and the mother ocean herself, and all the life contained therein. Palms come together, hands back to the heart. And turning a quarter turn to your right to face the north, Honoring all of the other creatures that walk the earth, from the insects to the great elephants, the four-legged ones, the mammals, the rodents. Take three deep breaths here at your own pace. Honoring all those beings that, for many of us, give us food, for generations have given people clothing from their skins, Mm, that whole circle of life and the ecosystem that works together to create the balance of life on this planet. Inhale, sweeping up. Palms come together. Exhale, back down to the heart. And turning another quarter turn, turn or wherever is facing forward for you so you can see your screen. Let your feet be a little bit wider than your hips, more like shoulder width apart, and turn the toes out 45 degrees. Let the arms reach high, knowing that the circle of all beings is actually a sphere. It's not just around us in one dimension, it's also above us. So honoring all the heavenly bodies that are way beyond what we can even see or fathom but that deeply affect our lives energetically. The beautiful moon, the sun, the stars, the planets. Big breath in. And bringing the hands together overhead, exhale. And come into a squat, slowly lowering down into a squat. Some of you may need to grab a block and place a block underneath your sitting bones. Or some of you, if you have knee issues where your knees say no to this, just bring your hands onto your thighs and come into a supported squat here. But however you can access your squat, let the tailbone and the sitting bones come straight down. I'll come a little further back so you can see me. Hands at the heart and press the outside of the elbows and upper arms into the inside of your knees to create a little bit more invitation to open the hips. Palms at the heart, thumbs just in line with the center of the chest, reaching up with the crown, draw your heart forward toward your thumbs. And here in this squatting position, which in yoga is called malasana, we can honor the earth and the circle of all the ancestors that have come before us, that have blessed us with their love and their culture and their blood and their DNA. and bringing the hands down to touch the earth, honoring the sacred ground that we walk upon, the rocks and the mountains, the earth that is our home. 
And then slowly straightening the legs, lifting the hips, turning the heels, pivoting on the heels so the toes turn to point straight ahead. So your toes are pointing right behind your wrists here. And just coming into a little wider leg forward fold than we did before. Pulse in the legs here. Inhale, come into a squat so the thighs come parallel and you reach long through the crown of your head so that your spine is parallel. I'll turn sideways so you can see. Inhale, and then exhale, straighten the legs and fold. Inhale, squat, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, squat and lengthen. Exhale and fold. One more. And then once more, pivoting on the heels, toes turn out 45 degrees. Your heels are still about in line with your shoulders. Soften the knees and roll up one vertebra at a time, stacking bone on top of bone, rolling the shoulders back, coming to standing. Palms turn open. And then bring your hands to your hips. And we'll begin to, with knees soft, begin to circle your hips. Keep the shoulders so they're steady over your hips. So the movement is just from the pelvis and low back here. And just circling around, inviting some fluidity and gracefulness in your movement here. <sighs> Breathing into any tight places, just inviting that hip joint to lubricate a little bit. and then circling the other way. Staying deep and long and slow with the breathing, in and out through the nose. And then coming to center, straightening the legs, but keep the knees soft, so you still have that bounciness in the knees. We'll take empty coat sleeves. Leading with the heart, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth with a ha, so that uh, breath, that exhale is like a uh, cleansing expulsion of stale energy from the belly. So it's, and arms are just gonna hang by your sides like empty coat sleeves. Inhale and exhale, ha. Ha, 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 swinging side to side, leading with the heart. Ha, 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 ha. You can deepen your twist by lifting opposite heel, allowing a little bit more range of motion as you energize it and get a little bit more forceful in your twist. The arms are going to swing with a little bit more force, maybe opposite forearm, give your a uh, kidney on the other side, a little tap. Ha! 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 Remember, you're inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Moving prana, energizing the whole system, oxygenating the blood, building a little bit of heat. Ha! 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 And inviting a little spinal twist. Ha, 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 ha. Now let that exhale melt into a sigh as you slow it down. Ha, ha, ha. And let it come back to center. Feel all the life energy you've invited in, all that buzzing of prana flowing through you. Feel the aliveness and heel toe, heel toe the feet to hip width apart. Inhale, arms reach and rise and bring the fingers to interlace, pointer fingers to the sky. I don't know if you can see me, see the top of my fingers that well, but it's uh, what we call the temple pose or the steeple pose. Inhale, straight up, long line from your tailbone right through your spine, right through those two pointer fingers. And exhale, into your side bend, standing half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. And take a couple of breaths to breathe into this lovely stretch through one side of your body. If I'm mirroring you here and you're following me, it would be your left side of your body expanding and opening. Breathe some space between the ribs. 
body in one plane like you're sandwiched between two panes of glass. Inhale up to center and recommit to that length. Bring the pubic bone forward a little bit so you lengthen through the low back. And other side. Notice if your shoulders are going into scrunch asana and see if you can draw them down. All the while still staying long with the arms. Expanding wide open to the rib cage on the right side. Or whatever side you're doing. And inhaling up to center. Float the arms down. Feel all that aliveness in the shoulders. Give them a roll one way. Mm. And roll the shoulders the other way. And interlace your fingers behind you, clasping your hands in yoga mudra. If you prefer, you can also do that temple pose, point your fingers straight behind you, and we'll take it into a standing yoga mudra. Squeeze the shoulder blades toward the center of the back, spread the heart, lift the hands to reach to the back of your mat, and with a generous bend in the knees, fold over the legs, keep the torso and thighs connected, head releases toward the earth, hands reach to the sky, and draw your, your hands, your clasped hands up, and over toward the front of your mat. If you need to use a strap here to create a little more ease in the shoulders, you can do that. And slowly lift the sacrum, inviting a little more length in the backs of the legs. And then releasing the hands to frame the feet. Take another half lift. Long spine, engage that Uddiyana Bandha, navel drawing in and up, shoulders reverse shrug, back of the neck long so the chin is tucked. And exhale, fold. Soften the knees and sweep up like the rising sun, palms come together, and draw the hands back to the heart. Take another deep breath in and release. In and out through the nose. So I'm going to invite you to join me in a series of sun salutations and thinking about widening these circles of compassion, as Einstein said. I'd like to invite you to dedicate to make each time we go through this vinyasa flow, this connection of postures with breath, to make it a body prayer where you can dedicate this round of sun salutations to someone else. And I'd like to invite you to begin with someone close to you in your inner circle of family. Maybe someone who is needing some healing or some strength or some peace right now. So bring that person that's in your inner circle of family into your mind and heart and hold them there as you move with mindfulness and breath. Inhale, arms reach and rise. Reach through the right fingers and the left fingers. Arch back, heart and hands and gaze skyward. Exhale, dive deep into forward bend. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Navel pulls in and up. Exhale, fold again. Hands frame the feet. Step back with your right foot. I'm mirroring you here. Lower the right knee down. Low lunge. Left knee is firm over ankle. Inner thighs draw toward the midline. Hands sweep up in your kneeling warrior. We all need to access that inner warrior to cope with some of the painful things that are going on in the world right now. Exhale, hands clasp behind you in yoga mudra. Inhale, spread the heart wide. Exhale, hands release, frame that left foot and step back into your plank pose. Firm, long plank, press out through the heel. Abdominal muscles drawing in toward the center, shoulders over wrists, arm bones stacked. Exhale, lower down knees, chest and chin. Keep the buttocks up in the air, toes curl under. And inhale, draw the heart forward and come into your expression of cobra. You may want to start with a low cobra, baby cobra here, where you're really just using your back muscles and the hands are just there for balance. 
or if you feel open to it, to come into full cobra, it's up to you. Just keep the shoulders drawing back and the heart drawing forward and the legs energized, tops of the feet rooting down into the mat. On the exhale, we'll release, lower the forehead down and press up through plank or table and back to downward facing dog. Take another long, slow, deep breath in your downward facing dog to fully land here and lengthen through the backs of the legs. Lengthen from your sacrum down through your fingertips. On the inhale, your right leg is gonna sweep up back behind you, that's optional. But if you'd like to take three-legged dog with me, you can lift it high and find one long unbroken line. Exhale, step it through into a low lunge with the, left, the right foot forward, excuse me. Left knee slides back. Tailbone reaches down into the earth, spine lengthens. As the inner thighs contract toward the center, sweep the hands forward and up. Reaching fingertips to the sky, softening shoulders, opening heart. Exhale, hands back behind you and clasp the hands. Open the heart, a little deeper squeeze of the shoulder blades toward the center. Exhale, release, frame that right foot and step up on the inhale to a half forward bend, get that half lift, flat back, exhale, fold. Inhale, soften the knees, rising sun, palms come together overhead. On the exhale, draw them back to the heart. Take a deep breath in to settle back into your breath and your body. Just feel the reverberation of that first sequence. And on the second round, I invite you to visualize your circle a little bit wider and call someone into the circle of your circle of compassion, someone in your community outside your family, maybe a neighbor or a friend or a coworker, someone perhaps that needs healing or support. And let's dedicate that, this next round to them. Inhale, arms reach and rise, arch back as heart, hands and gaze lift. Exhale, dive deep into a forward bend. Inhale, half lift. Notice how the core really has to activate here in this half lift. Long from root to crown. Exhale, fold. As you step back with the left foot, we'll be in high lunge this time. So the back knee is lifted and the back leg is energized, you're pressing out through the heel. Take a few pulses here as you lift and lengthen both legs and lift through the core, navel in, shin toward the chest, so you're rounding the back, and as you exhale, you're landing more deeply and powerfully in your lunge. Take a few more like that. Some of you might find that using blocks here is a little more supportive, make it easier to hold this. And then landing in your lunge, again, power up the back leg and press the left palm down under the shoulder and the right hand rises to the sky. You're gonna take that revolved side angle twist. So a long line from your heel to your crown and from your lower hand to your upper hand. Exhale, release, step back to plank. Lower down on the exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra, low or high. Oh, just feel that expansion across the chest. If you're in full cobra, you're gonna feel it also in the solar plexus and lower abdomen. Exhale, release, and we'll meet in downward facing dog. And then from here, the left leg sweeps up back behind you. Keep pressing down and forward into the hands. And step it through. <sighs> Landing in your lunge. And take a few slow, deep breaths to find those pulses. Inhale, lifting up. Imagine that there's a string behind your heart pulling you up. 
like you're a puppet on a string. And as you exhale, the string is loosened and allows you to find your power, your own power as you land in that lunge. And you want to be on either fingertips or blocks. You don't want your hands flat because then it's hard to keep uh, length in the upper back. It, flat palms tend to create a rounding of the upper back. So find your steadiness in your lunge, and then on the next inhale, we'll take it into that revolved side angle twist. Remembering that you need to activate the, the thigh, especially the inner thigh on the front leg so that the knee stays over ankle. Long and wide, and release, exhale, inhale. Come up to that half forward bend, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Soften the knees, arms sweep up like the rising sun. Palms come together and back to the heart. Another deep breath in and out through the nose to settle in. And I invite you now to let that circle become a little wider and invite someone into your heart and mind. It's maybe outside of the circle of people known to you, but maybe someone who's in the larger community around us, either here in those of us who are, live locally in Ithaca, maybe somebody in the community that needs support, or someone in, around us in, in Tompkins County or in our state. It doesn't have to be anyone you know. It could be somebody you read about in the paper or a friend of a friend of a friend. Invite them into that circle of compassion. And let this body prayer be for them. Inhale, arms reach, rise, and arch back. Exhale, deep dive. This time you may want to take your hands and bring them behind your calves to create a little bit deeper fold. And feel free to keep the knees in a micro bend here or as much bend as you need. And let the crown of the head release to the earth. And then taking a half lift, slide the hands up the shins. Half lift, flat back. Inhale and release again, fold. Right foot steps back again. High lunge, and then we'll spin the back heel inward 45 degrees, rooting down through the outer edge of the foot, rise up into your expression of warrior one. Square the hips to the front so the hip pointer shines straight ahead. How are you called to show up as warrior in these times? So I invite you to bring your hands into that expression of fierce warrior, because we need to access our loving fierceness. Or if it just creates more ease and feels more authentic for you, a celebrative warrior, victorious warrior, with the hands a little wider apart. Or maybe you want to have your hands right at your heart in prayer. Contemplative warrior, prayerful warrior. Your front knee is right over your ankle. I'll turn sideways uh, so you can see the angle of the pose here, how my thigh is almost parallel to the floor. The back leg is powered up. And then from here, swivel the hips open and sweep the arms overhead in a big arc to come into warrior two. Draw the outer edge of your left foot toward the pinky toe and the hips are shining toward the long end of your mat. Shoulders soft. Take it into your dancing warrior. Actually, another name for this pose is peaceful warrior, and I think that would be appropriate here. Turn your front palm up. Take it into your peaceful warrior. Inviting that beautiful side bend. Exhale, cartwheel the arms down, and take it right into that side angle again. So right palm presses down, left hand rises to the sky. Torso rotates, heart turns toward the left. Exhale, frame that front foot, step back into plank pose and flow through your connecting vinyasa. Some of you may be ready for chaturanga up dog or take it into knees, chest, chin, cobra. 
meeting in downward dog or child if you're needing that. Take a deep breath in and exhale, release. We're going to sweep that right foot back up behind you into a three-legged dog. If you want to bend your knee and rotate the hips open, stacking right hip on top of left, you can do that. Kicking your own asana, as they say. And then lengthening out, stepping through. Spin the back heel inward 45 degrees. Rise up, warrior one, on the other side. So take a moment to check what's happening in your pelvis here. Is it tilting out to the side? You want to try to turn so that we're facing head on whatever it is we need to confront in ourselves or in others with love. Maybe you need to widen your stance a little bit in order to do that. You want to root down through the outer edge of your left foot. Soften your shoulders and root your tailbone down into the earth. Once again, you have the opportunity to feel connected with earth and sky down through the tailbone, up through those pointer fingers, or separated fingers. Ujjayi breath. And then sweeping open into your warrior two. Take a moment to check the alignment of your feet. So the right heel lines up with the instep of the left foot, open through the heart center, soft in the shoulders, but nice and wide right through the center of the chest. Take your peaceful warrior, lifting straight up first and then back behind you. Big breath in and exhale, release. Cartwheel the arms down. Take your revolved side angle with the left palm rooting down. Now you're back. When you take the side angle, you need to lift that back heel. I didn't say that before, but that's what has to happen in this pose. Exhale. Hands frame the front foot. Step up, half forward bend. Inhale. Exhale, fold. And sweep up into extended mountain. Hands return to the heart. And for this last round of sun salutation-based vinyasa, I'd like to invite you to widen your circle even more and call someone in to the circle of compassion that is your heart, in your heart. Someone even beyond, maybe someone on another side of the country uh, or on another side of the planet where there is suffering or strife, where healing and peace is needed. It could be somebody that you've heard about in the news or somebody that you just have a vague idea that there is suffering where they're living and invite them in. And we'll let this last flow be for them. Inhale, arms reach and rise, arch back, exhale, dive forward. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Step back, left foot. Oh, excuse me, I'm mirroring you here. Left foot steps back. You're going to remain on the ball of your foot. Inner thighs active toward the center and sweep up into a crescent lunge or balancing warrior. We'll take it into a balanced flow. So as you spring off the back leg, open your wings and come into your crane pose. And keep a little softness, a micro bend in the standing leg. And let your left knee... Remain at hip height and just let the foot dangle. See if you can find some softness in the elbows and shoulders. And for some of you, just dipping a toe in the water will be enough to help you steady in your balance. For those of you who'd like to take it into a little more balanced play, you can come right into the tree pose, your expression of tree firming up that standing leg now so that the trunk of the tree is steady and strong. Hands begin at the heart. And then play with whatever expressions of tree feel joyful for you, either spreading your branches. You want to make sure the knee goes straight out to the side and you're flat in your low back so that you get that nice wonderful hip opening benefit of this pose. 
And from tree pose, I'm gonna invite you to come into eagle. So releasing, and remember, you can always come to mountain first if you need to steady yourself. Those of you who can come straight into wrapping your left leg around your right, left arm underneath, find your expression of Garudasana, the eagle pose. Fingertips rise, hips come a little deeper. If you can wrap your ankle, great, but you can also just leave the foot dangling or toes on the floor to steady yourself if you need. So now we get that internal rotation of the hip. And strengthening of the leg, arms reach and rise back into your crane pose. And then take it back into that leap of faith as you step back a whole leg length, land on the ball of your foot. Arms reach and rise. I'm gonna invite you to take it into a twist now. Either prayer twist, palms come together. Upper left arm, outside right knee or lower your knee if that's better, or take it into revolved side angle. If you're taking it into prayer twist, try to press firmly into the palms and roll the right shoulder open, look up at the sky. Power up that back leg. Release, hands frame the front foot, step back into plank, and flow through your connecting vinyasa as you choose. Could be chaturanga, could be to up dog, or cobra, knees, chest, chin to cobra. Meet in downward facing dog. Take another long, slow, deep breath to steady yourself. Return to center. And lifting the left leg back behind you, three-legged dog. If you open the hip on the other side, do it here, rolling, stacking left hip on top of right, pressing firmly into the fingers and thumbs. And stepping through into your high lunge, you're on the back ball of your back foot, sweep forward and up, coming into balancing warrior. And from here, from Balancing Warrior, or Crescent Lunge, we'll open our wings and spring off into Crane. When you're ready to move from Crane into Tree, Find your expression of tree. What I love about the image when I think about the trees, I think about how the trees support each other in the community of the forest, underneath the ground through their root systems. If one tree is not thriving, not getting enough nutrients, the other trees will send their nutrients through a system of fungi helpers. Fungi? Fungi? <laughs> Helping send nutrients to the other tree, from the healthy trees to the trees that need support. If the trees can do it, we can do it. Moving into your eagle pose, wrapping your Right leg around your left, right arm underneath. Find your expression of eagle. Get down into it. Unraveling your arms and opening up back into your crane pose. And stepping back into your Balancing warrior to steady yourself to come into your expression of this twist. Either a high lunge prayer twist or revolved side angle or knee down twist. Keep that back leg strong and powerful, lifting the back of the knee to the sky. And release. And step up, half forward bend. Exhale, release. And sweep up. Reach to the heavens, root down with your tailbone to the earth. 
palms come together and back to the heart. Just take a moment to pause and feel. And turn sideways on your mat so that your feet are as wide as the length of one of your legs from heel to heel and toes turn out 45 degrees. <sighs> Opening through the heart center into five pointed star. Widening the circles of compassion. Just let this be a moment of meditation on embracing all beings. Letting your own sense of who you are expand beyond your fingertips, beyond the crown of your head, up to the heavens, down through the tailbone into the earth. Big inhale and exhale into your goddess pose. The elbows stay shoulder height and draw them back just a little bit so your heart is nice and wide. Take the outer edge of your thighs and draw them back behind you, root your tailbone down. Ujjayi breath, see if we can stay for five long, slow, deep breaths. And if you feel fatigued at any point, you can come back to embracing the world and come back into it. Invoking that Mother Gaia who embraces us all in oneness without discrimination. Inhale, opening up into your five pointed star. I don't know if that was five breaths. I might have cut it short. I didn't count. Pivot on the heels, the toes turn to point straight ahead and anchor down through the outer edges of your feet, which should be parallel to the edges of your mat. And fold forward, find a half forward bend, so your shoulders are stay, stay in line with your hips, your spine is long. Feel how the core needs to engage that core lift, Uddiyana Bandha here. The crown reaches forward and the back of the neck lengthens, so find that angle of the chin, a slight tuck there, so you can find that flat back. And notice how your hips need to draw back a little bit just to balance your center of gravity. Feel the energizing stretch in the backs of the legs. And as you're ready, fold into full forward bend, forward fold. Wide leg forward bend, prasarita paratanasana. And if you'd like to walk the hands forward and take it into a wide leg dog, down dog, you can do that, keeping the heart drawing toward the back of your mat or toward the back, the other side of your mat. Keeping your hips drawing toward that other side of your mat so that, again, you balance out your center of gravity. The test here is can you lift your palms off of the floor with your arms straight and still stay in this position. If you've taken the wide leg down dog and you've drawn your hips forward, you won't be able to lift your hands back. So you wanna let your body find that sweet spot, that center of gravity, where you can actually lift your hands off of the mat and hold them there for a breath or two. And then place them down and walk them back under the shoulders. Pivot on the heels so the toes turn out 45 degrees and soften the knees and roll up. Right through that goddess pose again. Take another deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale, opening up to the widest circle of compassion that you can find. And palms come together overhead and back to the heart. And 
and heel toe, heel toe the feet to come to hip width apart and come onto your knees. Just take a moment in child just to reset so the knees can be wide or together, however you enjoy your child's pose. Maybe as we return to this pose that we began our movement practice with, you can touch back into whatever that dedication or prayer you set at the beginning. You can touch back into that. And then rising up through your table pose, come onto your knees, and I'm going to invite you to come into your expression of Ustrasana, the camel pose. So as your shoulders remain stacked over your hips and your hips over your knees, maybe your expression of cam and camel will just be framing your low back with your palms, fingers pointing down, and just squeezing the shoulder blades toward the center so the elbows point straight back. And that gives you a wonderful stretch through the front of the chest. Lifting up, so get a little lift with the lower ribs. Squeeze the shoulder blades to the center. Point the elbows back. Maybe look up at the sky if that's comfortable for your neck. Or you can lean back, but keep your hips over your knees. So this is a, an easy way to do, easier way to do camel. May not be easy for everybody. You can always choose to keep the chin level. You don't have to let the head go back. Opening that heart center, opening the throat center. Pressing into the low back to come back up to center. And if there's a deeper version of camel that you are comfortable with, you can take that, either with hands beside you, uh, blocks beside you, excuse me, pressing your hands into the block, letting the block support you, or bringing a block, I'll do it like so, bringing a block between your calves, pressing into the corners of the block, making sure that when you come out, you place your hands first on the low back, lift up first and let the head come up last. That's the order in which we need to come out safely. Some of you are comfortable with a deeper version of camel where you curl the toes under and sweep back with one arm, sweep back with the other arm and grab your heels. Here your heels are lifted a little bit and as the throat is wide open, you can take a deep breath in and exhale with a ha, ah, stick out the tongue. Ha, ah, clear out any energetic blockages that keep you from speaking your truth, speaking truth to power. Ah, some of you will be taking the version of camel with your feet flat. That's okay if you're comfortable with that. Letting that string around the heart lift, hanging down from the heavens, lift you high in the heart center. When you're ready to release one hand and then the other comes to frame the low back and slowly come up to center. Soften the shoulders, lengthen right straight up through the crown of the head. And we'll come into the rabbit pose as the complementary pose to the camel, so it's a deep forward bend. I'm going to fold over the legs in child's pose again, but this time the inner thighs are going to be together. So your belly is resting on top of your thighs. The hands come back behind you. And just take a moment to settle here. Just feel all of the energy. Where do you notice the prana flowing in the back? And to come into the rabbit pose, the hands are going to come to the inside of the ankles, over the ankles. So bring the backs of the hands over your Achilles tendon. You have to lift your hips a little. Grab your ankles so that your palms face that pointy bone on the inside of the ankle. So the backs of the hands face one another. And then lift the hips and roll onto the crown of the head and keep holding tight on your ankles and pull, pull, pull. So the arms straighten 
the low back lifts, the hips lift. See if you can get your thigh bone straight up and down. You're on the very top of the head, not on the forehead anymore. Maybe rolling back and forth a little bit as you pull and release slightly to massage the cranium. But really give that lift and pull so you get that wonderful creating space between the vertebrae. Stretch in the low back, stretch in the middle back, rounding in the upper back. And when you're ready to release, float the hips down to meet the heels, release the hands. And press up through table. We're gonna take it into a pigeon pose to open the hips a little bit more, stretch the glutes. So slide the right foot behind, the, excuse me, the right knee behind the hand and wiggle the right foot a little closer to the left side of your mat. Slide the left leg back and take your expression of pigeon pose. You wanna come up onto fingertips or this if you're in the uplifted pigeon or some of you may be more comfortable on your forearms, maybe your head on a block, or some of you may be comfortable with full resting pigeon. I'm gonna let you explore and play with this for a moment. Some of you may wanna take a blanket and put it underneath your, your buttock. Let's see, we're doing right side, so I'll put it underneath my right, my right buttock. And then from here, you can play with pigeon dancer, grabbing the back foot, or mermaid pose, drawing the heel close to the buttock. So play with whatever your explorations of pigeon are that you enjoy. Some of you may like to take a pigeon twist. thing to remember in pigeon pose is to keep the hip pointers, those two pointy bones at the front of the pelvis, what we call your as-is bones, A-S-I-S -S bones, level with one another. Take another breath here to explore in pigeon. And if you're in resting pigeon, come up to an upright pigeon. This is called Ekapada Raja Kapatasana, one-legged king pigeon pose. And I'm gonna invite you to swing, to remove whatever support you have underneath your right buttock and swing the left leg around so that you stack your left knee on top of your right. So you're coming into gomukhasana legs. Here, I'll go this way and mirror you here. So you have your left knee stacked on top of your right, pointing straight ahead in line with the navel. For some of you, if your sit bones aren't anchored down into the mat, you can take a block and sit on a block, have the block going the long way. And that little bit of height might be um, just what you need. Your toes point out in opposite directions. Your heels can either be close to opposite hip or for a little more juiciness in this pose, spread your toes apart from one another. Oh, I should have said you may want to <laughs> grab a strap, but I didn't give you that warning, so that's my bad. You actually don't really need a strap to do this. You can grab your clothes to do uh, gomukhasana arms. Lift your right hand straight up to the sky. Pat yourself on the back and bring your other hand around just to invite the elbow to point straight up. And then the left hand comes back behind you. And if you have a strap, you can use it if you need it. Otherwise, just grab your clothes and walk your fingers toward one another along your grabbing your clothing. <sighs> Wonderful stretch for the shoulders, upper arms, upper back, chest. Gomukhasana. Raja 
lots of breath here. And when you're ready, one more breath and then we'll release. Unwind slowly and take it right into a twist toward your left. So you may want to use your, if you're up on the block, you'll use your hand on the outside of your thigh or knee. If you're on the mat, you'll use your forearm. Lengthen up through the spine on the inhale. Exhale, deepen into the twist. Releasing your twist. Going to swing that left leg around back behind you, back into pigeon. And we're going to transition into pigeon on the other side. And I'm going to give you, it's your choice how you want to do that. For some of you, you're going to want to press back into downward facing dog and maybe flow right through that connecting vinyasa if you've got energy. And then drawing your left knee in front of your, uh, behind your wrist. Some of you might just want to come into table pose and do it from table. So however you can get into your expression of Ekapada Raja Kapatasana with the left knee forward. <sighs> Find your open heart, your elegant, proud pigeon chest, softening shoulders down away from the ears. Mm. If you need to place something underneath your Left buttock for support, you can do that, which gives you a little bit more ease in keeping the hips squared as you play with some of these variations. And if you're relatively new to practice, I think most of you have been practicing with me for a while, but there's some who haven't been. And it's fine just to take the gentlest, simplest expression of pigeon which is folding over that bent knee, keeping your hips squared. It's a lovely stretch for the area of the glutes, the iliotibial band. When you're in an upright pigeon, you also get a lovely stretch in the front of the torso and the psoas muscle on the side where the back leg is stretched back. So breathe and enjoy. From here, I'm going to invite you to come into Gomukhasana legs. So remove whatever support you have under your left buttock and swing the back leg around. So you stack one knee on top of the other. Yeah. And again, I'll come back into mirroring you. So now right knee is stacked on top. Get them as close to in line with your navel as you can. Some of you won't be able to. Some of you are going to be more in kind of a cross between a cross-legged position and gomukhasana, and that's okay. We're really focusing more on the upper body here, so get as comfortable as you can, maybe using that block for support underneath you. <sighs> Long spine, shoulders stacked over hips. This time the left arm reaches straight up. Bend the elbow, pat yourself on the back, and bring that elbow to point straight up, helping with the other hand. Then back behind you, either using strap or your clothes, or if you can hook your fingers together like the barrel of monkeys. Remember that game? <sighs> Open in the heart, relaxed in the face. See if you can take this as a moment to soften around your jaw, the muscles around the eyes, the lips. Notice if the brow is furrowing. Often we aren't even aware that we're chronically furrowing our brow. 
So take this as a moment to bring your attention to your face. Some people call this pose the face of light. So let your face reflect that. All the while letting the breath be slow and deep with the ocean sound. Unraveling the arms when you're ready. Take it into a twist to the right. Your right hand comes back behind you, lengthen up. If you're sitting on the block, you can actually press your palm into the back edge of your block to invite that lift and turn your heart toward the right. Unwinding when you're ready. Unwind your legs. Remove anything that's underneath you. And if it feels good, press back to downward facing dog. Do that. Let's not flow through another vinyasa because we're in wind down mode now. So when you feel like you've gotten the enjoyment that you like out of your downward dog stretch, just lower the knees down. And come on to your back, hugging the knees in toward the chest. Maybe taking a little rocking side to side. And I'm going to give you a couple of moments to check in to see what your body is needing for our final part of our movement practice before guiding you into a little uh, closing meditation. So some of you may want to take an inversion, a few minutes of upside down, either legs straight up in the air, or taking your full shoulder stand and plow sequence. Some of you might want to take it into bridge pose, which is also a gentle inversion, just lifting the hips higher than the heart and the heart higher than the head. Or maybe you'd like to take it into a supported bridge. And this time, a nice way to explore a supported bridge is to bring the block either in the flattest setting or the medium setting, and just place your sacrum right over the block so the edge of the block is right above the crack of your butt and stretch out your legs in front of you on the mat and stretch out the hands behind you on the mat. This is just a suggestion of something you can try. I call this long bridge. Just be that long bridge from toes to fingertips. And you just let that block support you and breathe and relax into it. or any other exploration that's calling to you, if you have some reclining twists that you enjoy, or maybe you want to take a happy baby or a wind-relieving pose, take a few moments to explore there.
And if there's something that you're doing on one side, this would be a good time to switch to the other side so you can feel balanced. begin to transition from whatever your exploration is into just resting on the earth in Shavasana. If you need to place a rolled up blanket under your knees, you can do that. Just settle down onto your mat and feel all the aliveness and tingling in your body. Let your palms turn up arms about 45 degrees from the body. Your feet are a little wider than your hips and let the toes just naturally turn outward and let your eyes close. I'll offer you this poem from Jalaluddin Rumi. It's an excerpt. There is a community of the spirit. Join it and feel the delight of walking in the noisy street and being the noise. Drink all your passion and be a disgrace. Close both eyes to see with the other eye. Open your hands if you want to be held. Sit down in this circle. Quit acting like a wolf and feel the shepherd's love filling you. Be empty of worrying. Think of who created thought. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Move outside the tangle of fear thinking. Live in silence. Flow down and down in always widening rings of being. So I invite you now to completely let go into the support of the floor beneath you and release any control of the breath and just let your breath find its natural rhythm. Each exhale, a gentle letting go. Rumi reminds us to move outside the tangle of fear thinking, that illusion of separation. He invites us to sit down in the circle and allow ourselves to flow down and down in always widening rings of being. So visualize yourself now as a point of light in the very center of a small ring that is just wide enough to encircle your body. Feel yourself as whole and complete within this perfect circle. As you alone are a community. You are a community of cells, tissues, and organs working miraculously together to support life in you. And now allow your awareness to widen, to include those beings who are in your immediate family, the people that you interact with and connect with on a daily basis. And also include the animals and plant life that are a part of your world from day to day. Allow your circle to expand to include each of their perfect circles.
expand your circle even more now to include all of the people in your work life, those near and far that support you and challenge you in your work as you move through the world. Expand your circle to include the people you play with, friends and neighbors, people you enjoy sharing your creative and leisure time with. And allow your circle to widen even further to include all those in the community where you live those known to you and unknown to you. Include the people that you share the road with as you commute and move from place to place. Include the people who, with whom you interact in the stores and businesses, or I have to add on Zoom these days. Embrace all of them as part of the community of neighborhood, city, and town and include animals and plants as well. See them all as part of your tribe. And allow your circle to widen even further to include all of, this, all of the cities and the towns and the counties that make up the community we call New York State. or if you're joining us from another state, whatever state you're in. And allow your circle to expand even wider now to include all of the states and their respective cities and towns that make up the community we call the United States of America. Emphasis on united. Let your circle continue to widen and include all the nations on earth. Let there be no human being that stands outside of your circle. Let there be no plant, animal, or living thing that is not embraced within this circle. Allow every river and mountain, every canyon, every forest and field, and all the beings, large and small, that dwell within their miraculous ecosystems to be lovingly enveloped in your circle. Now allow this circle to expand so wide that the edge begins to dissolve. This illusory edge that was never there in the first place softens and disappears as we remember that there is nothing but spirit, infinite Brahman, God, the Great Mother, the great circle whose circumference is nowhere and whose center is everywhere. This is the edgeless space that is divine presence which holds us all in the community of the spirit. And just allow yourself to rest deeply now in that awareness.
Now begin to bring your awareness back into your small circle and let your breath deepen. As we bring our awareness back into our own bodies, the invitation here is to hold the awareness of this, these larger and larger circles within our consciousness and the largest circle which has no edge to it. I invite you to find any movements that bring you back into your body and bring you towards sitting up, maybe hugging your knees in and rolling over onto one side. Take your time to come back to a seated position. our practice, I invite us to make a virtual Zoom circle. So if you can, turn on your camera. Some of you may not be able to, but if you can turn on your camera, just come and sit close to your screen so we can all see one another. You may want to put ourselves on the grid view so we can all see one another. It's really squares, but we're going to envision it as a circle. And as you come close to your, your um, video camera, let's just see if we can open our hands wide enough. You may need to sit back a little. Open your hands wide enough so that your hands are touching the hands of the person next to you. So we can create the sense of holding hands together. I'll give you a moment to get that set up. Some of you are still fumbling with the screen. So arms spread wide, hands touching in this great circle of connection that we have in this strange virtual world. And together as we hold hands in the circle, let's take a deep breath in and join our voices in the sound of Om. together with the heart, offering each other the salutation, namaste. Namaste.